Hello, welcome back to Shiny Tree Trash. Um, it's lovely to have you back with me. Um, I'm going to be looking at Magic Dust today. So this is the third box in the series of the shifters from Vallejo Paints from Home Firth Gaming Centre, link below. We're going to test these out using the airbrush. And I read the instructions on the back of the box this time after doing um, paints with a brush and a palette on paper, it didn't work. So we're going to apply these with an airbrush over a matte and a gloss ground, see which one comes out best. Okay. Um, just like to mention as well, uh, that I am now in the 21st century finally just this last week I've joined Twitter so please check me out and follow me on Twitter Facebook and Instagram and um, I'll update you when I put new videos on because I've got plenty of ideas and lots of things to come uh, if you have any things that you want me to look at or how to investigate these colors further please uh, put a link below um, comment below and I'll see if I can check that out for you so I'm going to just step for a second off screen to set up the um, compressor and set my PSI to the uh, right setting this time after last video you'll have to check that one out a bit of a disaster uh, and I'll be back in a second okay so we're all set up there the uh, PSI I think is important to mention is uh, 15 uh, you don't want it too high because otherwise it'll just blast that paint everywhere as I've learned um, so we're going to start off with um, violet copper. Um, on the page it did look coppery but it also in different um, directions had a, a lovely tinge of like a rose pink, really quite nice. But all being well we're going to see a more effective intense effect using the airbrush. So I found that it worked really well in the last video um, doing it this way. So we're just going to run through all three boxes in the same way so you can just have a, a better understanding of how the collections are working. So that's coming through there. So I'm seeing a violet there. What I found as well uh, with the last set is that letting the colours just dry off um, allows the colours to set and intensify. So I will be doing that before I show you properly under the camera what they're looking like. But I'm already seeing a, a halo of... Um, a mauvey pink, so, um, a nice sort of old goldness to it, and I am seeing tinges of, of um, copper. I'd maybe describe the pink as maybe a bit more um, violet -y even under the conditions that I'm viewing it from. But that's the beauty of this paint set, and as the name describes, shifters, they do have that chameleon effect, and they are altering as the light picks them up and on the box it describes the paints as, ha uh, um, as having little prisms which is really quite fascinating and I suppose those prisms are collecting and reflecting the light differently so as in the other video um, I'm just spritzing um, the end of the paint in the airbrush onto a black paper it's actually a card um, and this is just really for my learning because I'm going to take these paints into a personal painting project um, for studies of beetles as I've um, mentioned you probably those of you that are following me and watching me are probably a bit fed up with me talking about these beetles but if anybody does know me out there personally I have a, a quite a big fascination with um, insects and beetles not the the, the way the scurry or anything kind of eeky like that but really the um, aesthetic value of them and um, the, the shells uh, and how they're so iridescent and the play of light and I've um, used my 
textile skills to um, reproduce those in miniature forms. So that's my intention of um, kind of doing some paint studies of these beetles to then further take into my textile work. Um, and as I'm working, I'm already thinking about all this. It's already racing through my mind, all these ideas, what I'm going to do. Perhaps try these on handmade papers and, and maybe mould handmade paper over a form and dampen the paper down to get the um, sort of ridged of the wing casings. I'm thinking then because I've got a 3D form, these paints are going to work a treat to give that iridescent gleam to the shell casing of these beetles. Um, I'm thinking can I use them on fabric um, so my brain is ticking along as I'm doing all this so if I start smiling to myself it's because I'm getting all these great ideas that come into mind and um, I'm already dreaming of the prospects of what I can do and how I'm going to do it which is all the fun that hopefully you'll be able to share with me as we continue on this journey so um, I'm just waving this at you <laughs> trying to uh, allow you to see what I just saw. I just saw this magnificent gleam of I'm not going to say violet because I don't think it is violet. I think it's more of a rosy. I will use rosy bronzy violet. It's so hard to describe these but I want to describe them more as senses. You know that they just you want to just dive into it. It's just delicious. Okay so moving on. Stop babbling. Uh, I'm moving on to what am I doing? the I believe it's this one just getting too carried away and excited with the prospect of everything I'm going to do gold pale blue is what I'm doing right now so I'm going to keep to the moment um, that's what we're doing it's irid um, iridescent on the page it's got um, goldy green I'd say more green tinges I'm going to sort of wave that to the side and see if you can pick that up greeny gold it's quite translucent um, in the bottle and as lovely as it was on paper I didn't see that colour shift of the pale blue so wow this is lovely can you see that I'm seeing already the most beautiful green very subtle I'm gonna go over it see if we can intensify it for me now I look like I'm an expert with this airbrush thin layers that is really lovely this could be my new favourite um, just slipping it over onto the edge of the container as well just so we can hopefully see how the colour continues and moves so I'm seeing a really beautiful subtle emerald mangrove green not yet seeing the blues yet because I don't think I've played with it in enough light so I'm seeing it at an angle from this side I am seeing the blue bit of an oceanic blue I'm going to leave it to dry and um, we're going to review that at the end and I'll move it around more so I'm just putting that on the page here and seeing that lovely greeny with tinges overtones of blue but again I'll move it around at the end so hopefully you can appreciate the colour change just going to flush that through just keeping the airbrush clear as I'm doing that um, I'd just like to uh, thank everybody that's been looking and watching the video so far and if you could like share and subscribe if um, you like them that would be absolutely fantastic uh, it's nice to know then as well that people are watching and I'm not just wittering on to myself and if you see that bell as well you can ding that bell and you will uh, have notifications then of the uh, videos that I'm going to be uploading okay so the third colour in this range is the pearl violet again it is sort of translucent looking in the bottle um, with the initial testing on paper again it was translucent with uh, a nice sort of pearlescent perhaps pinky gold um, gleams 
uh, as an overview to the to the shade, which was pretty. Okay, but on the paper we didn't see the strength of the colour change, and that's really starting to play now. And obviously the black ground, the black base colour is really helping. Uh, the fact that it's a 3D form and we've got more movement and play of light is helping the technology of these colours. Now that's not drying but I'm seeing a really lovely haze there of the violet and it, the violet is um, a key colour component on the label we're seeing the, gold, the violet there. I'm not seeing... Um, well, I suppose the pearl is the pearl essence. I'm seeing sort of pinks in there, so I'm assuming that's more of a mixture of shades being pearl slash violet. So I think that's where I'm seeing that sort of pinky overtone that we see on the page. So again, I'm just blasting that on my um, black, black card just so I can compare the difference between those initial tests quick flush through and we're going to move into what was my favourite colour when I did my experimentations on the cartridge paper. It was that beautiful um, buttercup colour that you can see to my, um, to my left. Is it left on the screen? I hope it is. So it's really buttery, really rich. And that was my favourite colour, I think across the whole of the um, three boxes. So we're going to see if it has that same effect on, um, on the black base. So we've done the three colours on the mat. So I'm going to move now onto the uh, gloss. So that's got a light gloss um, finish. Just used a gloss varnish with the airbrush. And from the manufacturer's um, instructions, I believe that the gloss um, just makes it more reflective. It helps that reflective value. Okay, so uh, just to remind myself, this is all gold and we should be seeing uh, orange colour changes with this. So I'm just trying to build that up softly and smoothly. Instantly I'm seeing um, less yellow and more of a, a green which is interesting because on the page it was very significantly buttercup yellow. So a little bit disappointed personally because I just love that colour so much and I'm not seeing that same yellow here. But let's just put that on the black ground here. So onto the black ground, the black card. So as I'm building that up, that is slightly more yellowy there. So I'm just going to go back to this and just layer it up a little bit more, a bit more trigger happy. I am seeing that now as a stronger, um, I would say old, maybe like an old yellow, old gold, not the same cheerful buttercup yellow that I saw on the paper, but it is building up as more of a yellow colour. Um, going to wait until it dries as I've said with the previous ones to move it around under the camera to see if those orange tones appear and I think that's what's really fun about these um, paints is that they are quite magical it is that play of light that um, just brings them to life and gives you that fleck of um, intensity and, and flecks of different colours and shades so they are really good to see in life, in, in real life, in different conditions and um, different directions. So apologies if you're not seeing that same magic on screen, um, because we're kind of missing that, I think. Okay, so fourth colour we're looking at is old silver with pale violet um, change. Uh, in the first initial test was seen a very soft bronzy 
um, outcome. Ooh, instantly, just in the reservoir then, I saw a fleck of change. That was, that was lovely. The real quite, the like jewels, little gems. And again, harping back to my insects, I think that's why they'd work so well. Okay, so I'm gonna just rotate my pot. Check my colours coming through. Make sure I've not got any of that yellow still there. Top that up a little bit. And then we'll crack on. Yeah, it's funny because in this reservoir I am seeing like the iridescence, that change already in the reservoir. So this is maybe going to be a really good fun one to see. Make sure I'm straight. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. That's going on lovely. Ooh, old silver. We said silver. I'm seeing the silver as if by magic. That's lovely. I'm seeing silver. I'm seeing violet. And isn't that so crazy? Because on the page there, it is so much bronze, pale bronze, rosy bronze, but bronze. And here... I'm gonna let it dry and then maybe you'll see it more but it is silver that's lovely that's really really subtle and lovely right quick blast on the page I'm gonna quickly wash that through and we're going to look at the final color in this magic dust collection from Vallejo and uh, remember there's links below I'm not sure if I've mentioned that uh, links below if you want to um, find out where they're from okay so the last colour we are looking at is silver again with pink as opposed to what we looked at which is silvery violet so some of these i have noticed uh, are very similar so i think if you were using them you could perhaps if you were doing model painting for instance get a really lovely graduation of a morphing color so maybe like in cloaks or on shields or just thinking of different aspects that these paints could be used I think they would work really well in succession because they do sort of bleed and blend into each other quite nicely uh, for instance in the last box I looked at space dust there was a series of three colors that all had like um, a gold um, tone to them um, and sparked off in different different spectrums and they would work as, as a morph coating okay so uh, last one silver with pink so as the paint looks in the reservoir if we can see it there and on the page it's very coppery looking bronzy coppery let's see what we get just make sure it's clean again before i run it Woo! silver silver's coming through um not sure about the pink if i am completely honest um i think the pink particles are mixed with that oceanic greeny blue uh so i would maybe say it's silver with a pearlescent looks a bit more pearlized to me but of course colors are perceived by everybody differently and these have even got the added magic of looking differently in different lighting conditions different angles so um, as I've done already with the previous sets and um, I think what's realistic to do is just let this dry while I clean off my um, airbrush uh, just give that the opportunity of drying and then we'll have a quick review of the six colours in the Magic Dust collection okay so just bear with me quick clean out and then it, I'll be able to turn the compressor off and hopefully the noise will improve
Okay, so that's all done. Flush through. We'll turn that off. Okay, so I just want to start off by saying that I think the um, use of these paints with the application of the airbrush massively um, enhances the chameleon effect, that shifting effect, that colour change magic is happening uh, with the airbrush. I think also that the um, black ground is really helping. So I'm just going to rotate through these. My starting point was um, here, which is the um, silver, no it's not, I've got those mixed up, it was the copper and um, violet, so that's this colour here, so I'm going to just see if I can get it in both cameras, seeing the violet there, I'm going to hold it that way, it's so hard to get that change, oh where did I have it? There, can you see it? It's a little bit on the dark side, but there's the copper. There's the violet. Copper, violet. Magic. Magic trick. Okay, I'm going to keep this angle because I think that really works. So that is the next one. Am I rotating it the right way? That colour change there is um, that oceanic blue and green okay rotate again there's the silver silver and pink get myself confused now no that's the silver and pink so that pink is quite um a violety pink and there's a silver anyway spectacular I really like these ones as well because these ones you've got a big leap of color change we've got the blues the greens we've got the purples the pinks that silver um, I'm just gonna rotate that down here because I think maybe you can see the colors better it's very oil slicky not having that really intense blue like we had in that other collection but I think that's quite a nice spectrum of colour there just on that pot just in that one direction and then we'll get a different play of um, colours in different lights I just want to apologise because I really don't think you can um, appreciate the colour change that I can see uh, here in live um, okay so this one was the starting point, was the buttercup yellow one that I loved previously with the um, brush on the cartridge paper. Uh, not having that same glorious yellow there, it's, see that orange, wow that copper. So seeing a really gorgeous coppery orangey shade there and as I tilt it that way on this screen we can see um, sort of green um and that's where it's showing exactly on the um on the label on the pot so i think the airbrush is is giving us uh, what's in the in the pot so to speak i'm going to rotate round so we've got then the old silver and pale oh there look at that that's gorgeous there's the violet under my chin and we've got the silver silverish but looking up close, if I was to dive bomb into that, um, it's quite a mix of uh, different particles there. And that's quite fun to look at in a bit more detail. Okay, the last one was uh, silver and pink. So very sort of similar. Oh, there, soft flash of that silver. Um, and again, this isn't maybe the perfect way that I could have done this because maybe if I was going to do this again, I'd like to put masking tape between the colours so then it's really obvious where one starts because I think as I'm spraying I'm getting over spray over the circumference of the circle which is maybe then interfering a little bit and maybe that's why I'm saying they lend themselves to a graduation and a morphing of the whole colour palette um, 
but you live and learn um thank you for joining me please check me out on my next video we're going to look at the final box galaxy dust using the airbrush and um then we'll review the whole collection um and see how we move forward with the spectacular beetle project okay so thank you for joining me thank you bye